بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شفيع الأنبياء والمرسلين على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله. So Alhamdulillah, today we started um, a new surah. Which surah was it that the Sheikh started? Surah Al-Kahf, MashaAllah. Uh, surah Al-Kahf, I'm sure, is a surah that you're all familiar with. Um, surah Al-Kahf, why was Surah Al-Kahf revealed? Ibn Abbas, عنهما, he mentions that a large part of this surah was revealed um, following an incident that took place where the Quraysh, they sent two individuals to Medina. One of them was called Al-Nadr ibn al-Harith and the other one, Uqba ibn Abi Mu'id. They sent these two individuals to Medina and they said, go to Medina and speak to the rabbis there and explain to them the situation that we're facing here in Mecca with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Explain to them his characteristics, what he's claiming to be, etc, etc. Of course, you have to understand, at that time, the Prophet ﷺ is giving da'wah. The Quraysh are trying different tactics to pull people away from Islam. Yes, to pull people away from the Prophet ﷺ. They're calling him a madman, they're ridiculing him, etc, etc. But the Prophet ﷺ carried on. So they said, let's go to Medina, send these two people to Medina, and let's listen to the rabbis. Why? Because they are people of the book. They know about the Prophets and, and, and they will know what the story is. So these two individuals, they arrive in Medina, they sit with the rabbis and they discuss the issue of the Prophet wasallam and they explain what is going on in Mecca. The rabbis, they say, go back and ask him three questions. If he knows the answer to these three questions, then he's truthful, he's a prophet. If not, then he's a soothsayer. So what are the three questions? Number one, ask him wasallam about the young boys. This group of young fitya who um, secluded themselves and what is their story? It's an amazing affair. Ask, them, ask him about them. Number two, ask him about the man who transverses the east and the west. Okay, in Dhul Qarnayn. And number three, ask him about the ruh. Ask him about the soul. So these two individuals, they come back to Mecca and they approach the Prophet ﷺ after telling the Quraysh, look, these are the questions that we were told to pose. If he knows the answer to these, then he's truthful. Yes, if not, then he's a soothsayer. This is what the rabbis have said. So they go to the Prophet ﷺ and they pose these three questions. The Prophet ﷺ, what did he say? Who can tell me? He said, come back tomorrow. I will tell you the answer. Yes, and he didn't say what? Insha'Allah. And later on in the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says as was recited وَلَا تَقُولَنَّ لِشَيْءٍ إِنِّي فَاعِلٌ ذَلِكَ غَدَى إِلَّا إِنْ يَشَاءُ اللَّهِ Don't ever say you're going to do something tomorrow without saying insha'Allah. Don't say you're going to do something next week, next year, without saying insha'Allah, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills. This is a lesson for you and I, that when we have an intention to do something, we always say insha'Allah. So, the next day comes, no revelation, uh, descends to the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. Ibn Abbas says 15 days pass by, no revelation comes. The Prophet والسلام, is waiting, the Quraysh are laughing. And then Jibreel descends after 15 days with Surah Al Kahf. And in Surah Al Kahf and Surah Al Isra, we have the answer to these three questions. Now, the first, now Surah Al Kahf, of course, is a blessed surah. It's that surah that the Prophet والسلام, said that we should recite every Friday. Why? Because when the person recites this every Friday, what will he have in reward? The Prophet ﷺ said it would be like a light emanating from one Friday to the next. And many of the scholars they said, what does this mean? It's a protection from one Friday to the next. So it's a practice to always recite Surah Al-Kahf on the Friday. And of course, the Prophet ﷺ, he also said about the one who memorizes the first 10 verses of Surah Al-Kahf, that he will be protected from the fitna of Dajjal. And this is a goal that each and every one of us should have. Alhamdulillah, we have 10 days left of Ramadan. If you've not memorized these 10 ayat of Surah Al-Kahf, make that your aim. That I'm going to memorize the first 10 verses of Surah Al-Kahf. This is a protection, subhanAllah. And you know the fitna of Dajjal is no easy fitna. Surah Al-Kahf is a surah that has four stories. 
Okay, four key stories are in Surah Al-Kahf. And these four stories relate to different types of fitna that we face. The first story is the fitna of faith. The young boys who were tried and tested when it came to their faith. The second story is Sahib al the the owner of the two gardens. And that's the fitna of wealth. Yes, sometimes you will be blessed with wealth and that's a fitna, that's a trial. Sometimes you'll be tested with wealth in the, in the sense that you won't have much wealth. And that's a fitna, that's a trial. The third story is the story of Musa and Hidr. And that's the fitna of knowledge, of ilm. And the fourth story is the story of Dhul Qarnayn. And that's the story, the, the fitna of power and authority. I want to briefly reflect with you um, on one verse that was recited uh, with regards to the first story. The story of the young boys. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِذْ أَوَ الْفِتْيَةُ إِلَى الْكَهْفِ فَقَالُوا that these young boys, they secluded themselves, or this young group, they secluded themselves, or they retreated to a cave. And they said, رَبَّنَا آتِنَا مِنْ لَدُنْكَ رَحْمَةً That Allah grant us from your mercy. وَهِيِّئْ لَنَا مِنْ أَمْلِنَا رَشَدًا And prepare for us from our affair right guidance. What is the story of these, these youth? So these youth were living at a time of idol worship, where there was a king who was pressuring the people and forcing the people to worship idols. These youth, they didn't believe in this idol worship. They were upon Tawheed. They were upon the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when they stood in front of this king, they said that our Lord, Rabbus Samawati Wal Ard, is the Lord of the heavens and the earth, and we will not associate any partners with him. And then Allah says that they retreated themselves. And they, they, they retreated to where? To a cave. In order to seek protection and to, to, free, uh, to flee from the persecution of this king. What happens in the cave is that they ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for two things. They ask Allah for his mercy and for guidance. Right guidance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala causes them to fall asleep for over 300 years. They fall asleep. Now what I want to reflect with you on, and the story you all have, I'm sure, heard the story, you can read the rest of the story. But I want to focus on these two things that these youth ask for. They ask for what? Allah's mercy and right guidance. Now, number one, when it comes to youth, we all know that it's very difficult for young people. Yes, growing up at a time where everybody is doing a certain thing, for young people to be different, it's not easy. Well, look at these youth. They were growing up at a time where everybody is worshipping idols. Did they follow the status quo? No, they didn't. Did they follow what everybody else was doing? No, they didn't. They stood, on, stood up for what they believed. And this is a great lesson for you and I, and especially for our young people. That maybe all of society is going in a certain direction. But if that direction is in contradiction to your deen, you do not follow that direction. Yes, you stand on your principles. And normally, as we all know, young people, they want to fit in. Yes, you want to fit in with everybody else. You don't want to be different. Yes, you don't want to stand out. And this is why you find many people, many of our youngsters, when they go to university, many of them lose, lose themselves. Why? Because when they go to university, everybody is doing a certain thing. Everybody's going clubbing, everyone's got uh, in a relationship, everybody's got drugs, everybody's... And all sorts is going on. And many of our youngsters were what? They will be consumed by what they see around them and they will just follow the ways of everybody else. But these youths in this story teach us what? They teach us that. Stand up for your principles. Don't follow what everybody else is doing. So, as I said, they fled to the cave and they asked for Rahmah. My dear brothers and sisters, when it comes to Rahmah, this teaches us actually one thing before I get on to Rahmah, is that when they were in trouble, they took the means and then they asked from Allah. Okay, so they... And he took the means, i.e. they went to the cave, they sought to protect themselves. And then they called upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that teaches us what? That when we're going through difficulty, we have to take the means. We don't just say that Allah will take care of my affair. Yeah, Allah will take care of it. And you don't do anything. Now you're, you're sat at home unemployed, you need a job, and say Allah will provide. Allah is the razaq, no problem. No. And you have to do the means, you have to have a CV, you have to fill out application forms, you have to do what you can and then you leave the matter with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, you're ill. When you fall ill, what do you do? You don't say Allah will take care of my affair. No, you go and see a doctor, you get medicine from the doctor, yes, you take that medicine. Yes, and then of course you rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you have to take the means. Yes, this is what these youth teach us. They, take the, they took the means. And we also learn that what? When you go through difficulty like these young people were going through. They were going through difficulty. When you go through difficulty, you seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. 
Seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. This is what you ask for. When you're going through a difficulty in your life, you ask Allah for His mercy. Yes, you might be having financial pressure. Your business isn't going well. You've got difficulties, stresses. Yes, you've got problems at work. What do you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for? Ask Him for His mercy. You've got a relationship issue with your spouse. You've got issues with your children. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what? For His rahmah. For His mercy. And subhanallah, you know, the, the issue that you might be facing, you might think that this is a, such a major calamity or such a major issue. But realize when the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends, then no matter what it is, no matter what it is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can rectify the affairs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can put your affairs straight. But you have to rely upon Him. You have to ask Him for that mercy, my dear brothers and sisters. And the second thing that these youth ask for is what? Is rashada. They ask for guidance. They ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for right guidance. Guide us in this difficult time. They're going through a difficult time now. People are after them. The king's after them. They ask Allah, oh Allah, give us your mercy and give us guidance. Guide us out of the situation that we're in. And we are in need of guidance. In every single rakah of salah we pray, what do we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for? We ask Allah for guidance. Yes, ihdina sirat al-mustaqim. Guide us to the straight path. We are in deep, desperate need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's guidance. Ultimate guidance is Islam, but in every affair, any, any issue that you come across, any problem that you face, any choice that you have to make, you need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's guidance. So always asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for His guidance. My dear brothers and sisters, you could have everything in this world from a material viewpoint or, or from a, a material angle. You could have everything. But if you don't have guidance, then realize you've got nothing. Let's realize you've got nothing. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not guided you, then what, what do you have? Really, you've got nothing. So we are in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's guidance. And this is why you find in the du'as of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would ask Allah for what? He would say, Allahumma rahmatak arju. Oh Allah, I seek your rahmah. This is what I'm hoping for. I'm, I'm counting on your rahmah, ya Allah. He's always asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, for his rahmah. And what's the common du'a we recite in Witr every single night? Yes, either Shaykh Abdul Ghaffar or Shaykh Abdul Rahman is reciting what? What's the dua? Allahumma hadina fi man hadayt. Oh Allah, guide us with those whom you guide. We're always asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, for guidance. The Prophet was is always asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance. So we ask Allah that He always bestows His mercy upon us. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He always guides us in all of our affairs. Wa akhiru dawana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.